Hey everyone, this is Nero once again from the Overclocker magazine and today we have another Kingston Fury DDR5 memory kit review. This time I'm looking at a high performance desktop kit that's tailored to the Overclocker and hardcore enthusiast. Rated at DDR5-7200, this is amongst the highest speed kits Kingston has in their entire DDR5 range. Typical of Kingston however, the timings are a bit modest because well, it's 32GB rated at CL3844489 at 1.45V. This memory is at present retailing for about $260 US on Amazon. Here in SA, while we have plenty of Kingston Fury and Beast models, this particular SKU seems to get no love. However, you can buy the black and silver edition of this very memory for 4700 or so. Going back to what I said about modest timings, there are retail kits from other DRAM vendors that use the same ICs that are rated at CL34. Now this could be superior chips on those memories than what Kingston is using, but I doubt it. Again, this is Kingston just being conservative, which isn't a bad thing for it means we can extract a ton of performance from the memory compared to what we get out the box. That said, with the memory, I suspect the limitation in terms of frequency is unfortunately my CPU and motherboard combination. The reason I say this is because its limits are similar to those of other DRAM kits I've tested lately or close enough. While I was able to post DDR5 8800 and even make it to Windows at DDR5 8600, ultimately I had to settle for DDR5 8200 as a stable data rate. Not bad at all, however, I can imagine with a better IMC perhaps, the memory would be running north of 8600 daily. Performance and overclocking aside for now, this memory looks great. It's easier to appreciate in the flesh, however, I do like the fairly intricate heatsink design. The white and silver contrast works exceptionally well, especially for an all-white build. RGB lighting is of course handled by the motherboard software, but Kingston does provide their own application in the Kingston control software which you can get from the Windows storefront. This software is rather useful in that it gives you XMP timings, frequency and operating voltage. It shows you the physical RAM layout and what each individual stick and effect is doing in real time. For what is basically just RGB software for the memory, there's a lot more here than I expected by some margin. For instance, you can change the speed, brightness and direction of the lighting. I in particular like the 10% lighting option and the off option of course, especially for the evenings. Overall, a surprisingly competent piece of software for what it is. With all that covered, let's not delay any further and get on with the benchmarks. Testing was done on the ROG Maximus Z790 Apex, both the original and the phenomenal Anko edition. The CPU of choice was the Core i9-13900K because it had the better IMC than the 14900K. As usual, out the gate we have IDA64 memory bandwidth. Compared to the default 5600, the 7200 XMP profile delivers 10GB a second more in read and copy bandwidth and 20GB a second more in read speeds. At 8200CL38, it's above 120GB a second which is mighty impressive. Memory latency scales accordingly as well, almost 20 nanoseconds between 5600 and 8200. SuperPi 32M shaves off about 10 seconds between DDR5 5600 and the 8200 setting. But as you can see, the largest jump in performance is between 5600 and the Kingston Memories XMP settings at 7200. So be it to overclock or not, performance is still good. Why Cruncher? is an interesting one, scaling by 3 seconds each time from 5600 to XMP and then to 8200. I would have thought the difference would be larger between 5600 and XMP but that was not the case. Next up is 7-zip benchmark. In this one, scaling is probably as you'd expect, 20,000 points between 5600 and XMP and about 7,000 points between XMP and the OC setting of 8200. Handbrake video encoding is one of the tests where I expected a lot from the memory OC but sadly this was not meant to be. There's literally one second between XMP and 8200 and about two seconds between 5600 and the XMP settings. Hardly worth the effort if this type of CPU dependent encoding is what you do. And then finally we have Geekbench 6 of course and it shows much better performance scaling in both single and multi-core results. The Kingston memory delivers a 1200 point advantage in the multi-core test and when overclocked gains an additional 1600 points or so. This benchmark responds very well to the memory subsystem. All that aside though, let's just get to the gaming benchmarks. 
First up is Cyberpunk 2077. I suspect GPU limitations here, but nonetheless, the 1% lows is where the difference is. DDR5 8200 has surprisingly good numbers, besting DDR5 5600 by a whole 19 FPS. Dying Light 2 is next, and here, the difference is mostly in the average frame rates and noting the 1% lows. Great performance regardless of the memory settings, but the DDR5 8200 setting from the Kingston memory takes the lead by 18 FPS. Forza Horizon 5 performs exceptionally well on just about anything these days, but again, we see that the 1% lows scale with the DRAM clock and settings. 17 FPS difference on the low end and 14 FPS difference or advantage rather in the average frame rate for the DDR5 8200 settings. Last, we have Hitman 3. This game shows the best DRAM performance scaling of all. A 38 FPS advantage between DDR5 5600 and the Kingston memory when it's set to DDR5 8200. Even if you don't get that far, simply enabling XMP gets you 19 FPS on average. With the numbers covered, it's clear that the Kingston Fury DRAM is rather special. Not only does it look incredible, but it's the perfect kit for those all white builds with some flair exactly what I'm planning on using it for in an upcoming video. This is high speed memory, high end memory and it's far from cheap or what one would consider cost effective. Moreover, Kingston as stated earlier is super conservative about their timings and this memory could have easily been rated at CL36 with no change to the operating voltage. All that aside, you get memory that can clearly overclock, looks amazing and will probably continue to do better with a DDR5 supporting CPU that is better than this one in terms of its IMC. And that's it for the Kingston Fury Renegade DDR5 7200 kit. Let me know what you think of the memory. Would you consider it? Do you have a system that can push it to its limits? Put your comments down below and until next time, like, share and subscribe. Take care of yourselves and peace.